Hey guys, welcome back. The big patch for season 1 is out with tons of changes. So I've gone through it and picked out the most relevant changes for minions, so you don't have to go through it. I'll try not waste your time and jump right into it. So first, we have golems move faster and unhindered through enemies when their cooldown is activated. So moving faster is huge. It can make the golem skill more reliable on demand. For example, if you use the iron golem with the stun ability, a crucial stun can often save us. Like sometimes when the golem is too far out and it has to path through a bunch of enemies to do the stun and try save us from an enemy that's attacking us, it came too late and we ended up dying. So this this can be pretty pretty huge. Also, it helped golems just in general path through many many enemy units. I think the golem often gets stuck and oftentimes like if the pathing is too complicated it would just stand there. So hopefully this fixes that. And finally I'm not sure if this will help with bone prison as well because I use bone prison in my summoner build and there's a problem like if I send the golem too close to the center of bone prison it will not be able to get in there and just get stuck on the outside i'm not sure if this will fix it but you know who knows um if not hopefully next time they'll fix that uh all right next we have race skeleton skeletal priest bonus damage increased from 20 percent to 30 percent 10% damage increase is actually really sweet. It might me it might make me less likely to forget spamming this ability because I oftentimes forget. <laughs> so yeah, it's unconditional. I mean you you do have to press it and you need a chorus, but other than that, it's unconditional and it's not discounted by the 30% that uh from stats inherited from us. So just this flat bonus is really super nice. And always remember effects like these, these applies to each of our minions. So always remember the 10% will be multiplied by the number of minions we have. So this is a pretty decent buff, I would say. Uh, in conjunction with that, we have race skeleton, skeletal priest healing increase from 10% to 15%. Um... I uh, know this is okay, I guess a nice small bonus, but I really doubt that it will matter. Um, next we have amplified damage increase from three six nine, so nine percent to twelve percent. This is a tiny, tiny buff, I would say. I'm not sure entirely how much our minions actually get from this, but assuming that it's thirty percent. That's a sub X 1% increase for each of our minion. But hey, we play minions, so we take whatever percentage we get. <laughs> All right, let's see. For the Book of the Dead, Shadow Skeleton Mage upgrade attacks required for an additional Shadow Bolt reduced from 5 to 4. Okay. So if you're playing the shadow variant of summoner, I think this can actually be pretty huge. This will really tell, um, and like I think you'll be able to tell this effect in longer battles, where consequently you'll just get tons of extra balls, which is damage, but also it enables all your a lot of your like shadow debuff and buff skill passives, and this just makes it even better, right? you'll get even more damage out of those as well. So this, yeah, I'm definitely, I'm using cold mages right now, but I'm definitely eyeing, like, shifting to skele uh, shadow skeleton mage. All right, aspects. What do we have here? Cold bringers aspect blizzard cooldown reduced from 10 to 8 seconds. All right, this is very nice. Um, I find that... Across all the mages we have, which I think I usually have five of them, even with the 10 second cooldown, the uptime of the blizzard is actually pretty decent. And I see it like almost most of the time, like 
when engaging mobs, there's almost always a blizzard. And I feel like the 8 seconds cooldown there will make this blizzard be there all the time, pretty much. And even better, combined with the damage to frozen buff, which we'll talk about very soon, this will be extra sweet. Alright. Alright, the next one here is big. Aspect of Grasping Veins Critical Strike Damage Bonus reduced from 30 to 60%. So let's assume 60% for the best roll to 40%. That's a 20% nerf. So my build doesn't use Grasping Veins, but I'm guessing that many of you use this. And if you do, uh, I think it's still good. Like, Grasping Veins is one of the best damage tool that Necromancer has for almost all builds. <laughs> but I think for minions, it's definitely worth seeing if you want to switch to other tools. Bone Prison for applying vulnerability, for example, is what I use at the moment. And I would say, yeah, take a look at that. Next. Ooh, this one. Aspect of reanimation skeletons damage bonus increased from 20 to 30 percent. Again, let's assume 30 percent to 30 uh, to 40 percent. All right, so I would say that this is the highlight of the balance changes for minions. So I'm going to assume you're already putting this on your two hander because if you aren't, you should. <laughs> And this is already, I think it's the biggest minion damage multiplier. Um, yeah, it just goes straight to our skeleton damage bonus and it's multiplicative. So with this change, we go from 60% because it's, our, it's on our two handers to 80%. There's a 20% multiplier damage buff increase just straight to our minions. More precisely, skeletons, remember. But I think that's fine because the bulk of our minions are skeletons. And yeah, this is just a huge, huge buff. A big buff that minions really need. So, nice. Alright. Moving on. General stuff. Alright. Aspect of disobedience maximum stacks reduced from 100 to 60 Reducing maximum bonus armor percent from, say, 50% uh, with full stacks to 30% at full stacks. So, this obviously, uh, I'm pretty sure everyone's talking about this one because all classes and all builds almost uses this and it's one of the best defensive tool in the game. But even if this class, uh, even if this affects all classes and builds, I think pure minion summoners are probably the least affected by this. Let me explain. So since we're already playing in a more passive style and we survive by not getting hit at all because if we're playing pure minion build, the ones doing the battle should be the minions, not us. So. Since we're already doing this passive style, this doesn't hurt us as much. Because we're already like paper anyway. We're super fragile and getting one shot all the time if some something hits us. So um, another thing, we're also not very reliable in keeping this at 100 stack. Um, maybe depending on the variant of the minion build, you could be more reliably getting 100 stacks, but for my build at least, I use, I don't know, Bone Spear, uh, Bone Prison, um, Decrepify. Yeah, like, Bone Spear get, get decent stacks, but, like, my essence is really limited, so I cannot just uh, spam them continuously. I mostly just use Bone Spear for applying Vulnerable. So, um... Yeah, I actually might consider replacing this with a different defensive aspect, given that even with, if I manage to get to a number of, uh, I don't know, 100 stacks even, like, now the bonus is not that great anymore. Alright, moving on. Let's see what we have next here. 
All right, more general stuff. Critical strike damage reduced by 17%. Again, not great. Our minion does definitely do crit damage. Now it will deal less damage because of this. But remember, compared to other classes, since our minions only inherit 30% of the stats, we are very much less affected by this. Which is nice. Like, sure, it's a will deal less damage, but relatively, it, this puts like the minion build. It will move it up. Next, however, is the big hammer: vulnerable damage reduced by forty percent. This one, though, unlike critical strike damage, our minions are getting the full value because vulnerable is a is a debuff on the enemies. So this hurts us a lot too. And I think unfortunately this might just straight out negate some of the other buffs we got, but we'll have to see. Next one, damage to frozen enemies increased by 20%. Now, if you're using cold mages like you should, this is a very nice addition. And remember, this will also get multiplied directly by the control glyph, which gives us a multiplicative 20% damage to frozen enemies. So, yeah. And and also with the new 8 second blizzard cooldown from the Coldbringer aspect, this might actually be pretty decent. So, yeah. Keep an eye on this one. Alright, and last we have summoning skill damage along with all these other changes, is increased by 25%. Uh, I think this is a nice small buff. However, though, the sad thing is that this can only appear on chess and amulet. And usually the chess piece is already reserved for all the defensive stats that we can get. But maybe with this, it's worth making it a priority uh, affix in the slots. Uh, I'm not sure, but I will give it a try. Um, but yeah, so those are the most important changes for pure minion builds. I would say the biggest takeaway, I think, is the big buff to the aspect of reanimation. Going from um, a multiplicative 60% bonus damage to 80%, that's really huge. And the second biggest takeaway, like any other builds in class, of course, is the nerf to vulnerable damage. So keep an eye out for that. Now, while uh, overall I think will be slightly weaker compared to before, I think the minion build doesn't suffer as much as other classes and builds. And therefore, this patch does make minion builds stronger relatively when you compare it to those other classes and builds. So I hope this was helpful to you, and if it was, please leave a like and subscribe. Drop a comment if I miss anything, or if you have any cool insights. And of course, have fun in Season 1, and I'll see you next time.